So today, we're going to look at AI, artificial intelligence. What is it? What does it do? Now, turn to Psalm number two, and we will see what the world is like today and why there's so much trouble in the world. But this is quite a thing. The second Psalm, beginning in verse one, why do the heathen rage and the people plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together. Now, I got an email from someone who said what I covered last time or the time before about how they want to sodomize and Gomorrahize all the children, that that was disinformation because he went to the UN to find it on the UN web page. No, they're smarter than that. They took 60 jurists and had them form a committee over here so they could report to the UN what they wanted. And one of the things was there should be no laws against sexual practices, period, unless it's by force. So that's how slick that they work it, okay? But it is against the Lord and against his Christ, okay? And here's what they say. Let us break their bands. In other words, we don't need God. We're God. We'll decide what's right and wrong and what's good and evil. And we are smart and we have artificial intelligence, and artificial intelligence can think, and artificial intelligence has a conscience, and so we'll put all of our trust in artificial intelligence. Really? How's that going to work? Let's read on. Let it break their bands asunder, and cast away their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens uh, uh, laughs. The Lord scoffs at them. So what is he going to do? Their day is coming. Totally unexpected. I wonder if false intelligence is going to tell them what that is. And if, well, we'll change it from artificial to false. Okay. Default intelligence. Because it has no soul, no spirit, no love, no understanding except what? What men put into it. So he says, Then he shall speak to them in his wrath, and in his fury he terrifies them. Okay? You read the book of Revelation, what's going to happen at the end? How's artificial intelligence going to rescue them? Okay. Can artificial intelligence always be right? No. Here's what's going to happen. This tells the whole story. Verse 6. Yea, I've set my king upon Zion, my holy mountain. That's establishing the kingdom of God. So they want to have a one world government. Okay. Let's see how they came to this point. See, there comes a point that human intelligence with Satan's inspiration become so conceited that they think 
they can replace God. Okay. Now, what they want to do, 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, let's go there. Okay. They think that they can replace God. And one of the goals of fake intelligence is what? Immortality. We will keep human beings alive with our technology. Well, who's going to choose who has that technology and who doesn't? It's like Bob Lewis said, we came from dust, we're going back to dust because that's what God said. Okay? 1 Corinthians, the first chapter. And let's pick it up here beginning in verse 17. 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 17. Paul is speaking, he said, For Christ did not send me to, uh, to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with the wisdom of words. Okay, now that's the wisdom of this world. And what is going into all of the machines that they combine together to come up with artificial fake intelligence? Okay, all the teachings of men. Now, they may put some things in there of the Bible, but what they put in, will it come out the way God says? Will artificial intelligence say, well, I've got the word of God in here, and I'm going to tell you that God says, you all need to repent of your sins. <laughs> no. See? Then you'd have to blow up the artificial intelligence. <laughs> Because it's full of sin. <laughs> okay? Not with words of wisdom, the wisdom of words, rather, lest the cross of Christ be made void. For to those who are perishing, the preaching of the gospel is foolishness. And isn't that what they do today? Now notice this, verse 19. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. I will nullify the understanding of of those who understanding, where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? Did not Christ make foolish the wisdom of this world? And yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay. Now, let's take AI or FI against a dog. I was watching things unexplained. And this woman had a sickness and the doctors couldn't find out what it was. They took all kinds of tests and everything that they take and they didn't know what it was and they told her, you know, take these pills, go home and be a nice girl. Okay. <laughs> So she went home. She had a dog. And the dog kept coming up to her right side as she was sitting and sniffing. And sniffing. She didn't know it, but the dog with his nose and sense of smell that came from what? Who gave that? God. Then she had another examination and they discovered she had cancer of the ovary. Huh. Thank you, Poochie Poochie Poo. Okay. Yes. All right. Talk about making the wisdom of the wise foolish. How can the doctors explain that? The dumb dog was smarter than they were. <laughs> okay. All right. Now let's look at it again. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? Did not God make foolish the wisdom of this world? 
For since in the wisdom of God, the world through its own wisdom did not know God. And everything behind fake intelligence is rejecting God. Now, who do you suppose is interfering in that, in that process? Satan. Now, we have live streaming. That's modern technology. We're using this for the proper thing, the proper way. Many of you have the Bible on your smartphone. Keep a lot of batteries handy in case you may need them. Okay. But that's a good use of it, right? Without the knowledge of the truth of God, you can't make a good use of any of those things that need to be done. Okay? That's why we need the Word of God. Now notice this. Did not know God, it pleased God to save those who believed through the foolishness of preaching. Okay? That's the way they look at it. Okay? Now let's come to Ephesians, the second chapter, and let's see the activity that is going on all the time. Now, to give you an example of how much knowledge that they're able to cram in to artificial or false intelligence, in order to make it work to diagnose certain diseases through X-ray or, or digital sequencing of the body or taking pictures of the body, in order to get the, the, the right amount of information to detect lung cancer, they had to put in over 200,000 images from various doctors to be all compiled in this one place where they can keep that much digital information stored in order to make a machine that will detect lung cancer. See? Now compare that with the sniffing dog. <laughs> okay. Just think how much dog food they could have bought with all that money. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Ephesians 2, here we go. Here's how Satan works, and this is what is happening, see? Now you were dead in trespasses and sins, and that's true, even though you're alive and walking around, if you don't have the Spirit of God, you're as good as dead anyway because you have the law of sin and death in you, and you have nothing that is going to keep you from going back to the dust, as Bob said. Okay? In which you walked in time fast according to the course of this world. And everything that fake intelligence is, is according to the course of this world. Now, where, what is the course of this world? Where did it come from? The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And what did Satan convince Adam and Eve about? If you eat this tree, you will be wise. will make you wise. See, and all human beings want to be wise. God made us to desire that so we could learn of him. Satan comes along and says, oh, you can do it my way. It's a whole lot easier. See? But he doesn't tell you what the end will be because he's a liar from the beginning. Okay? Okay. Walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, that's Satan the devil. Okay? Where do all of these things go? Well, this live streaming is going what? 
is going through all of the things that have been devised. It's uh, either cable or it's, it's uh, electronic transmission through the air, correct? Okay. The spirit that is now working within the children of disobedience. Now, do the children of disobedience think that they're doing wrong? No. Okay. They think they're doing right. We're doing all of this for the good of mankind, but there are those like Elon Musk who says we need to be careful with fake intelligence because it might make a mistake and destroy the world. Huh. Okay. Prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now working within the children of disobedience. And so there we have it right there. Okay. Are all of these things against God? Yes. But they don't know it because it comes a little later. All right. Now, let's come to Isaiah 42. Let's see what happens with wisdom that men have without God. Isaiah 47. Now it's talking about mystery Babylon the great. Okay, verse 1. Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground. There is no throne for you, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for you shall no more be called tender and delicate. Take a millstone and grind meal. Push back your veil, draw up your skirts, uncover your legs, pass through the waters. Your nakedness shall be uncovered. Yea, you, your shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance and I will meet you as a man. As for our Redeemer, the Lord of hosts is his name, the Holy One of Israel. Okay. Now notice why all of this is coming. Now think about it. See. It goes clear back, clear back. Sit silent and go into darkness, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for you shall no more be called the Lady of Kingdoms. And what does it say in Revelation 17? The great city rules over kings. Okay. I was angry with my people. I polluted my inheritance. I gave them into your hand. You showed them no mercy. You have very heavily laid your yoke upon them. And you said, I shall be a lady forever. So you did not lay these things to your heart, nor did you remember the latter end of it. Now then hear this, O lover of pleasures, who sits securely, who says in her heart, I am, and none beside me. I shall not be a widow, nor shall I know the loss of children. But these two things shall come upon you in a moment, in a day. The loss of children and widowhood, and you shall come upon you in the fullness of the multitude of your sorceries. Sorceries all connected with Satan the devil. And for the great abundance of your enchantments. For you have trusted in your wickedness. You have said... No one sees me. Your wisdom and your knowledge has perverted you. And you have said in your heart, I am and there is none else. Okay? Perverted knowledge. Now, some of the most intellectual words in the world have come from the great philosophers of the world. 
But that's nothing compared to the simple words of God. Love me with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all of your being. See? So fake intelligence can never replace the truth of God. All right? Now, all right, let's take a look at this. Let's come to Proverbs 3. Let's look at some wisdom. The whole book of Proverbs is about wisdom, but wisdom gotten in the right way because you can take the wisdom and pervert it. See? What's the biggest perversion of the Word of God? And the Word of God is wisdom. And God's wisdom is what we want, right? Okay. The changing of the commandments of God. And everybody believe it. Everybody believes it. Okay. Now, Darlene and I were talking about this just recently. And we remember the days when Herbert Armstrong really was out there on radio and somewhat on television, but especially on radio, because he started when radio was just beginning. Okay. And he was relying on that all the time, and he did well. He did better than any other religious program on the air. Okay. But there came a time because the establishment controls everything. When he was out traveling around and they had the four presenters, they were required to have everything transcripted, written beforehand, and sent to the advertising agency that bought time for the television. And they could not go against one word of the transcript. So if you were watching television then, you were asking the question, what's happened to it? It doesn't sound like that's the way it should be, but you couldn't put your finger on what was wrong. It was being censored. Now, this is my estimation of it from here on. When Herbert Armstrong died, because this was a consorted effort of the establishment to shut it down, everything religion came on religious channels. Okay? Now, could we get on... TBN, Trinity Broadcasting Network, if we got on there and said, we're on Trinity Broadcasting Network, but you know they're all wrong about the Trinity. <laughs> and these guys are liars and thieves and taking your money. <laughs> okay? So, the establishment cut it down. Okay? And they control it. Now, there are some churches of God that, that put on a program on some of these channels and radio stations, but guess what? They get the best times of making sure no one listens. Like 5 o'clock in the morning, okay? 11.30 at night. And then all of the ones they approve of get the time in between. So that's how it worked. Okay. Now, back here to Proverbs 3, verse 13. Blessed is the man who finds wisdom. Now we can add on there, because we'll see in a little bit, the wisdom of God. 
See, not the wisdom of the world, not the wisdom of the wise, not the philosophers, and they're very intelligent people. I mean, one of the most intelligent one, and probably the most honest that we have heard, is um, uh, what is it, Victor Davis Hanson. It sounds like he may know something about God. But he's one of the intellects of Stanford University, one of their star graduates of all times. And he can analyze political things really super good, right? But what if he came on one time and said, well, you know, all during this time that I've been uh, being able to analyze the news for you, I've since been converted. You've what? I've been converted. Yeah. And I'm here to tell you that the only solution to all the problems that are taking place in the world is people repenting and coming to God, keeping his commandments, and waiting for the kingdom of Christ to be brought here by Christ personally, because there's no way to solve any of these problems. That would be his last program. Look what happened to Tucker Carlson. Boom. Right when he was starting to get close to what? What needs to be done spiritually? Cut him off. Okay? So, we need to get the wisdom of God. Okay? Blessed is the man who finds wisdom. Here it is, right here. You have the greatest intelligence of anything possible, the Holy Bible. This is greater than all the wisdom of men and philosophies in the world. Amen. See? But, as we know, God only gives the secret of understanding it to those who what? Obey him and love him. See? All right. And a man who gets understanding for the merchandise of it is better than gain from silver. It's produce more than gain from fine gold. Okay. Now I heard Jonathan Kahn. He's talking about gold. While, why gold was overlaid into Holy of Holies because it's uncorruptible and it lasts forever. See? Okay, but that was in the physical tabernacle and holy of holies. Then he talked about New Jerusalem with the streets lined of gold. Okay, well, the only way you're going to get there, but look at where gold is going to be in the kingdom. Not going to be of a high value. It's going to be what? What do you walk on? <laughs> so does that not tell you how much greater the wisdom of God is than the wisdom of this world? Okay. Now it says, she's more precious than rubies and all things that you can desire are not to be compared to her length of days. How about eternal life? Huh? How's that for length of days? All right. In her right hand and in her left hand, riches and honor. Her ways are the ways of pleasantness and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life. Notice the wisdom of God is what? The tree of life. What is Satan's way? The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And with this artificial fake intelligence taking over, guess what? The tree of the knowledge of good and evil is going to envelop the whole world. Okay? We'll go ahead and take a break.
Welcome back, brethren. Let's continue on with AI equaling FI. Okay, got to bring up a couple of things. A judge just ruled that schools must have Satan clubs after school. Now, have they done a good job preparing the young generation or not? Here's another whole report. Nearly one in five young adults say they're not straight. Global survey. Now here's what's coming with AI. Human implanted microchips back in the spotlight. A whole report of it. Okay. Here's another one, euthanasia allowing it to be at almost any age. Euthanasia is what? Assisted suicide by medical doctors. Okay, so here's what's coming with AI. Say goodbye to smartphones, revolutionary, humane, AI, wearable, is here. So you can take the dumbest person on earth and make them look smart, by giving them AI. Okay. So here it is. Okay. In case you didn't know, Humane is a top secret tech startup that was founded by ex Apple vets Bethany Mongriolanoa and Imran Chowdhury. The team just uh, shown off the game changing Humane One projector at TED Talk. Artificial intelligence. Let's get a little review of how that is. Okay. How does artificial intelligence work? Okay. It says here, master the right AI tools for the right job. All right. So here are types of artificial intelligence. Reactive machines, limited memory, artificial intelligence, theory of the mind, okay? These AIs can socialize and understand human emotions and will have the ability cognitive to understand uh, somebody based on the environment or financial features, etc. Machines with such abilities have not been developed yet but there's a lot of research happening to make it come true, okay? Self-awareness. Now, how can AI be self-aware, okay? Now, we were talking during the break, and Kip said, just pull the plug. It lost all of its awareness. Hello, I lost myself. Where am I? <laughs> and it talks about ways of implementing AI, machine learning, deep learning, and then it shows how they have to have all of these things interconnected with so many thousands of different things that have gone on in the past adding up to millions of things that have gone on in the past in order to have that kind of intelligence, okay? But as I mentioned, it has no mind, no spirit, no soul, no love, okay? Let's read about it here in James, the third chapter. Now, as we have pointed out, some of these things can be good if used properly. See? Like we're doing with the live streaming and different things that we do. Okay? Almost everything we do has to come through a computer, has to come through something like that. That's all fine and good. Okay? But you take all of that computing information and figure out how to get into the nuclear secrets of the Defense Department of the United States. 
Huh? Think of what could be then. All right? Now remember what Jesus said. What did he say in Matthew 24? Then shall be great tribulation. And except those days be limited, there would no flesh be saved alive. That means any life. So that tells you how dangerous the times are going to be. Okay, let's pick it up here in verse 13, James, the third chapter. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him demonstrate his works through what? Good conduct in the meekness of wisdom. See? And one of the greatest things about the wisdom of Christ and God is this. We know God, and we know what he's going to do, and that everything that we do, we do because of what God has given us. Okay? And we don't get lifted up. We don't come as dictators over people. See, God has given us choices. He wants us to make the right choices, okay? All right? But verse 14, but if you have bitter envy and, and selfish ambition in your heart, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthy, sensual, and demonic. And that's what we're dealing with when it gets carried away. Demons. Demons. Because where bitter envying and selfish ambition are, there is dissension and every evil thing. Does that not describe exactly what's happening in the world today and in America today? Okay. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, and one of the greatest peaceable things it does is this. It gets rid of the enmity of the heart that we have in our carnal hearts toward God and makes peace with God through Christ. Okay. Peaceable, gentle, reasonable, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and without hypocrisy. Now, the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of those who make peace. Okay. Now let's carry this one step further. Let's come to the book of Proverbs and let's look at what it talks about with wisdom. The kind of wisdom that we need. Proverbs 4. Now this is David writing this for Solomon. Now remember Solomon was loved of God. And Solomon was humble when he first began, right? God appeared to him and said, now what do you want? And he said, I need wisdom to judge your people, O Lord. Now that was by free choice. See? That's what Solomon chose. That was correct. So can people have good thoughts, correct thoughts that God recognizes? Yes. Okay. So what did God say to Solomon? Because you didn't ask for riches and wealth, but wisdom. I'm going to give you riches and wealth and wisdom. Okay. But look what happened to Solomon. So, Proverb 4 and verse 1, O children, hear the instruction of a father and be attentive in order to know understanding. For I give good doctrine, do not forsake my law. Okay, now what's the whole goal of conversion? The mind of Christ, keeping commandments written in our hearts and in our minds by choice. 
And that choice comes from what? Reading, studying, living God's way, choosing to do so. Okay? Since I've done some things on Jonathan Kahn, and one man wrote me and said, please get off of Jonathan Kahn. <laughs> so I'll just give you a little bit. I saw a clip where he said, we need to be repenting every day. Now, it was a short clip. So I don't know if he said, we need to be repenting of breaking the laws of God, and we need to start keeping them. I don't know if he said that or not. But if he didn't, what are you going to repent of? Whose standard is going to determine right and wrong, good and evil? See? If it isn't God's. See? You ask any person. I remember this. I, I was, went in to make a deposit at the bank. Okay? And there was this new gal there. And I was talking with her. And... Uh, I asked her, I said, now you look like a nice person. Are you a good person? Oh, she said, yes, I'm a good person. You know, by human standards, she's a good person. See? So I asked her, I said, uh, do you go to church? No. I didn't go any further than that because I didn't want to embarrass her. But I should have asked her, do you believe in God? Okay. Because the only way you can be a good person is from God. Now, she may be good in the sense of the letter of the law of doing things that are right. But that's in her own view. Okay. So, you can line up a whole bunch of homosexuals. And you could ask them, are you a good person? And they would say yes. Okay. All right. Now let's go on. Verse 3. For I was my father's son, tender, the only beloved, in the sight of my mother. He also taught me and said to me. Now these are quotes from David. Okay. Let your heart hold fast my words and keep my commandments and live. Now, this is direct from God. This is wisdom from God. This is the kind of wisdom that we need. So let's also give the sum of the whole message right here at this point. The Bible that you have and that you know and that you read and that you live by, gives you greater intelligence and understanding than all the fake intelligence of the world. So you have something greater than the greatest thing that men and Satan can put together. And God has preserved it so we can have it. But he's left the choice up to us. Are we going to want it? Are we going to love it? Are we going to live by it? Okay. So he says this, verse 5. Get wisdom, get understanding, forsake it not, nor turn from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her, that is wisdom, she shall keep you, love her, and she shall preserve you. Wisdom is the principal thing. Get wisdom. With all you're getting, get understanding. Okay? Based upon what? The words of God. See? That's what it is. Now think about what God has given us today, and we have the whole Bible and everything that there is that we need. Let's go on. Exalt her, and she shall promote you. She shall bring you honor when you embrace her. 
She shall place upon your head a garland of grace and shall bestow upon you a crown of glory. Now that's the end result at the resurrection, correct? See? So there it is. All right? Hear, O my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of your life shall be many. I have taught you in the way of wisdom. I have led you in the right path. When you go, your step shall not be hampered. When you run, you shall not stumble. Keep hold of instruction. Do not let go. Keep her, for she is your life. Now, verse 14 and 15. And are not into the path of the wicked. And go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it. Do not go in it. Turn from it and pass on. Okay. Then it says, for they don't sleep unless they've got something to cause you to sin. And that's what all of this is about. Okay. Now let's look at some other things. Okay. Let's come to... Let's come to Psalm 25. Now here, this is really one of the best psalms there is. And keep this in mind. And I might mention that anyone who is an elder or teacher, remember this, Psalm 25, okay? The Word of God is here and with His Spirit to teach us. See? We're always learning. We always have to be learning. You're learning. I'm learning. Can we ever say at any time in our life, now I know everything. <laughs> no, we can't. See, this is quite a psalm. Now I want you to focus in on the word teach. Okay. To you, O Lord, do I lift my soul. That's what you do every day when you pray. You go to God. See? Oh, my God, I trust in you. That's part of our prayer, too. See? When you trust in the way of the Lord, that's what he wants. Okay? That's why when you have the laws and commandments and word of God written in your heart and in your mind, then you're going to be what? Trusting in the way of God. Do not let me be ashamed, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Has not God delivered you out of all of your troubles up to this point? Maybe you still have some troubles you're working with to get out of, but he will deliver you in his time frame. Okay. Yea, let none that wait on you be ashamed. Let them be ashamed who deal treacherously without cause. That's unlike what's going on with the FBI spying on people. Did you see that interview of that, that young Korean woman who came from North Korea? She escaped from Kim Jong-un, and she was granted a scholarship in Colombia. So she thought, oh, this is wonderful a scholarship in one of the best colleges in America, okay? So she goes there. What did she find? Colombia is run the same way as North Korea. You must think like they tell you to think. You must act like they tell you to act, or you are the scourge of the earth. So she wrote a book on it. saying that she was amazed. 
She thought she came to America to get freedom. She left the tyranny of North Korea only to find that one of the leading universities in America runs their university the same way. Okay? Now notice this, verse 4. Show me your ways, O Lord. See? Everything in here is the way of God. And what happens when you don't go the way of God? And the New Testament tells us what's going to happen if we're true and faithful in the covenant that we have with God now in the first resurrection. Okay. Show me your, your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. And that is how we are to walk before God. See? Now, you can take this verse 4 and go to Psalm 119. And Psalm 119 is a, one of the greatest psalms that there is. What kind of attitude do I need to have toward the laws and commandments and ordinances and, and everything about God's way? Right there, Psalm 119. Okay. Now, notice this. Everything with AI is to make you do it. See? Just like at Columbia University. Now, in researching AI, I saw a video clip of what it's like to be in communist China. They've got Cameras, face recognition, everywhere. Beijing is one of the most peaceful cities in the world today because everybody is forced into obeying what the state says and they are monitoring your every thought, your every step that you take. And if you jaywalk, that's reported by the AI and you're deducted on your social credit score. Okay? So anyway, this reporter went in with his guide into a Chinese restaurant. All automated. Okay? When you came in, they knew who you were. They put you in a place where you would sit. They knew where you sat. And when you ordered, you would order it. And nothing was done by human hand. It was all done by robot. So you order what you're going to eat, and here comes the robot. Boop, boop, boop. And says, hello, so-and-so. Here's your order. Okay? So there, there's food. Okay? And then... The robot turns around and goes away. No personal interaction with people. An amazing thing. And I thought, how can these people live this way? See? But they're forced to because there are cameras everywhere and they know who you are by the AI that they have collected. Okay. God's way is different. God says, choose. Okay. Is not what Deuteronomy 30 says? I've set before you life and death, good and evil. Therefore, choose life that you may love the Lord your God. See? So everything that God has given is based on choice and on loving him and he loving us. See? That's the way it is. Show me your ways. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth. God is not going to force you. He will lead you. Teach me. There it is again. Teach me. Now, Think of this. 
All the instruction in the Bible comes from God. So when we're reading and studying the Bible, what is happening? God is teaching us every time. This is why, as you study and restudy and study and restudy, what happens? If you had a lot of these bing moments that come along, you tie scriptures together, oh, that's what that means. See? And you compare, put it together, see? All right, there it is. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. Meaning, only from you, God, comes life. See? Only you, God, can save me from death. Only you can save me from my sins and mistakes. Okay? Now, notice, when you do that. Now, you've heard of the song, Lean On Me. A lot of people like that song, Lean On Me. You know, a nice, nice soothing voice, and you want to come up and cuddle. Okay. Well, it says right here, On you do I wait all the day long. So God is with you all day long. Now in China, AI is with you day and night. See? Think of the scores of people they have on the monitors and how many AI computers that they have. Okay. What would be one way to give China a surprise? Do an electronic bomb over Beijing and shut the whole system down. <laughs> they wouldn't know what to do. Okay. All right. On you do I wait all the day long. Remember, O oh Lord, your tender mercies and your loving kindness, for they have been of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth. See? What does it say there? In, here, hold your place, and let's go to Hebrews, the 10th chapter. Let's read that. See? And it all comes through the life, sacrifice, death, and resurrection of Christ. Okay? Let's pick it up in verse 9. Hebrews 10 and verse 9. Now, this is Christ talking his own words. Now, just imagine the conversation that Christ had with God the Father every day. And remember when he told some, some of the disciples, because they were amazed at some of the things that he said, so he answered and said, what if you could see angels ascending and descending upon the Son of Man? So we don't know what was always going on between God the Father, the angels, and Jesus Christ. Okay. There's a spiritual connection that he's given to us that is there all the time. Okay. But we have to choose to stay close to God, and to use that spiritual connection. Verse 9, okay. Then I said, Lo, I come to do your will, O God. He takes away the first covenant in order that he may establish the second covenant. That's us. We're under that covenant. By whose will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Now look at that statement. Made holy. That's what sanctified means. Jesus prayed in his last prayer, sanctify them with your truth. Your word is the truth. So what is happening? What is happening to us 
is greater than what is happening to all of the Chinese and everywhere in the world that they have this fake intelligence guiding every little thing that they do. And what we have with us with the Word of God is more important than all of the vast array of computer machines that they have in the world. Okay. Now notice, verse 10. By whose will? Now that's the will of God the Father. See? Sometimes when we get into troubles and difficulties or we're having a rough time, we tend to fade away from God the Father. But remember, it's by His will. See? The gospel goes out, that's His will. Okay? When we choose to repent and follow Him, then His will is to grant us mercy, forgiveness, and eternal life. Is that not greater than anything that can come with fake intelligence in this world as inspired by Satan, the devil? Yes, indeed. Lo, I come to do your will, O God. We read that. Okay. By whose will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Okay. Verse 11. We have to read everything here. Okay. Okay. Now, every high priest stands ministering day by day, offering the same sacrifices repeatedly, which are never able to remove sin. But he, after offering one sacrifice for sin forever, sat down at the right hand of God. Okay. Now, think of this. We have, at any time we pray, especially when we're on our knees every day praying. We have there what? God the Father, who we pray directly to, and Jesus Christ at what? His right hand. And he's our intercessor. He's our Savior. He is our high priest. He is our sacrifice. An amazing thing. See? That is amazing. Greater than anything any man can do. Okay. Now, verse 12. But he, after offering one sacrifice for sin forever, sat down at the right hand of God. Since that time, he is waiting until his enemies are placed as a footstool for his feet. For by one offering, he has obtained eternal perfection for those who are sanctified. See? But we must choose every day to walk in the way of God, be taught of God, be taught of his truth, pray to him, yield to him, let God's spirit lead us. See, there it is. Verse 15, and the Holy Spirit also bears witness to us, for after he had previously said, this is the covenant that I will establish with them after those days, says the Lord I will give my laws into their hearts and will inscribe them in their minds. Okay. When he does that, what else happens? Verse 17. And their sins and lawlessness I will not remember ever again. Amazing. Amazing. For where remission of these is, there is no longer necessary to sacrifice, uh, offer sacrifices for sin. Therefore, my brethren, having confidence to enter into the true holiness by the blood of Jesus Christ, by a new and living way which God consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh, and that is direct contact with God spiritually. Now back here to Psalm 25. See? All of that is, and remember not my sins of my youth and my transgressions. Okay? Now, continuing on, verse 7. According to your loving kindness, 
Remember me for your goodness sake, O Lord. And that is to what God is looking at us when we are perfected in the resurrection. Okay? Verse 8. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore he will teach sinners in the way. That's what we need every day, being taught. Notice how many times it says, teach. See? Verse 9, the meek, not those vaunted up in vanity, the meek he will guide in judgment. The meek he will teach his way. There it is again. See? A lot of people want to know, well, what is God doing? Well, repent and ask God for meekness and be meek in your behavior. That doesn't mean you're weak because you're strong in the Lord, okay? And he will teach you. Now notice verse 10. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth. Here's the caveat. Right here. See. People can't come and claim God's mercy and truth. It's not something they can appropriate to themselves. It's something that comes from God to people. Notice, to those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. See. Now, our covenant is established beginning with baptism. And everything else, we're to grow in grace and knowledge from that time forward. How much can we grow in grace and knowledge? Well, that depends on what we choose and what we yield ourselves to God to think and to do and to practice and all of that. Okay? Verse 11, For your name's sake, O Lord, pardon my iniquity, for it is great. Now, I don't know what it was that David did that it caused him to say this. But you see, since Jesus died for the sins of the whole world, every human being who sinned had a part in his death. Is that not great? Yes, indeed. What man is, is he who fears the Lord? He shall teach him. There's that word again, teach. That's amazing. Okay? He shall teach him in the way that he shall choose. His soul shall dwell at ease. His seed shall inherit the earth. Now, verse 14. Notice what this will do. Notice what God has done and given to each one that is in true covenant with him. See? The world would like to know, but they can't know. They can do a lot of things to try and find out. But unless they come to God his way, they'll never know. Notice this verse. The secret. The secret. Now, what has Satan done? He has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. So they can't see. They can't understand. See? And this is epitomized by what one of the participants in the dedication of the, uh, the temple of Satan in Massachusetts, she stood up there and took a Bible and ripped off the pages of the Bible, and they all cheered, Hail Satan! Hail Satan! Okay? That tells you what kind of society we're facing. Okay? That shows right there. The secret of the Lord is with those who fear him. He will show them his covenant. My eyes are ever toward the Lord, and he shall pluck my feet out of the net. How many times have you been delivered and you didn't know you were delivered from something 
until it happened. And then you look back and say, whew, thank you, Lord. Okay. Whatever it may be, you know. So think of that. That's there. Okay. Verse 16. No, he says, eyes are ever toward the Lord to pluck me out of my feet out of the net. Now, verse 16. Turn unto me and be gracious unto me, for I am desolate and afflicted. Now, a lot of people wonder, why am I afflicted? Why do I have troubles? Well, how do you develop faith? Unless you're put in circumstances that you can't trust in yourself and you can't trust in anyone else, you got to trust in God. Now, I forget where it says, but I think it's Psalm 119 something. It was good that I was afflicted. Yes, verse 71. Because before I was afflicted, I went astray. Huh. See? Now, notice verse 17. The troubles of my heart are enlarged. So much you can't even handle it. See? Oh, bring me out of my distresses. Not singular, but plural. Okay, there it is. Look upon my affliction and my, my pain and forgive all my sins. So I don't know what it was that David went through to bring a prayer like this, but this is something. And that's what we need to pray, right? Consider my enemies, for they are many. Now think about that in the words of Christ while he was on the earth in the, in the flesh. All the angels around him, and then all the demons trying to come and get him, and all the scribes and Pharisees and Sadducees, and, and the elders were trying to figure out a way to kill him. Okay. For they hate me with cruel hatred. Oh, keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be ashamed, for I take refuge in you. Let integrity and uprightness preserve me, for I wait on you. Redeem Israel, O Lord, out of all his troubles, and you can put your name there. Redeem you out of all your troubles. Now, we know as the world is going right now, we're going to have a lot of troubles coming down the road, see? So we're thankful for the way we have it up to this time. But remember this, all the artificial fake intelligence of the world can never be compared to the Word of God. And that you have more understanding, and truth than the greatest intellectuals on the earth because you have the truth of God. You have the Spirit of God. You have dwelling in you the seed of eternal life. And what do they have? A machine that if you unplug it, it dies. 